What's up, YouTube? We back again. Another reaction. Airplay Beats, Lon Chi. And today we're reacting to When Zeppelin Met Elvis in May of 1974. <laughs> when Ze Led Zeppelin Met Elvis. Yeah, man. We, uh, we've we been discovering both of these Elvis as an artist and Zeppelin as a group. Man, yeah. When they met, what happened? Let's, let's, let's check this out. Let's, let's go, man. And your paths must have eventually crossed with Elvis Presley. Yeah. What was that like? Well, spectacular for us, you know, absolutely amazing. He, he was uh, involved with the same agents that we had at the time in the 70s, and uh, he wanted to know who this bunch of guys were who was selling tickets quicker than him. Wow. And we wanted to know who we were, too. And, uh, <laughs> And um, so know. he played the forum in L.A. and I'd seen him a couple of times. I was really so in awe of him as a singer. And, um, and I loved the way he could send himself up, you know. I mean, when you've been doing, it's a, you know, where are one-trick ponies singers generally. And if you can't see the humor in it, and right. he did. And a couple of times he made mistakes. And I remember that night at the forum, um, he was doing something like Reconsider Baby or whatever, it was, the Lowell Fulson song. Yeah. And he stopped it, and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, we've got Led Zeppelin in here tonight, we've got to get this right. Well, hello there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it. <laughs> if we could start together, fellas, because we got Led Zeppelin out there, and Jimmy Darren, and... Uh... <laughs> no, it's just incredible that he, they, to this day, they still remember every single piece they, he remembered his performance. He said he messed up a couple of times. It's a historic night, man. Yeah, that, they, they had a great time meeting them. Great. And whatever agency had Elvis and Led at that time. They probably had more than just them two, too. They probably, oh, gosh, they probably those running are two the top. And, and to say that Led was selling more tickets than Elvis at the time. Led Zeppelin was, that's them boys. That's, the guys, that's them boys. <laughs> Biggest touring group of the 70s, that's them boys. Man. If we could start together, fellas, because we got Led Zeppelin out there and Jimmy Darren and a uh, whole bunch of people, and let's try to look like it's we right. know what we're doing. And I went. What are we doing now? <laughs> Felt it, though. I mean, <laughs> so I mopped the tears away, and, uh, and we got the nod that we were going to meet him afterwards, and we went to the hotel, and they had the um, so we met him after a show, and uh, we went to the top floor of the whatever the cheap hotel was, a couple of gorillas at the elevator, and <laughs> they moved us down <clears throat> into this kind of holding station where um, it was a huge, one of those long suites where a door opens into another, door, like Get Smart or whatever, it's just on and on and on, you know? wow. <clears throat> and the whole place was full of Sandra D, sort of Stella Stevens uh -huh. kind of, which is perfect for me. <laughs> yeah. A pencil right. skirt and a beehive and I've gone right. from some white stiletto. He was a ladies man um, too. Shows your age. Isn't it? Um, and, uh, and then the door opened and this guy came through the door and I just, my heart jumped in. I was like, whoa, look at the way he moves. And I mean, he was just going around chairs like. <laughs> he was so, so, so cool. And I mean, of course he wasn't supposed to be cool, but he was, you know, a bit like us, I suppose. It's like, <laughs> and, uh, and he came over to us, and we stood in a circle for about two or three hours talking. And people kept coming by from his retinue, from his entourage, yeah. thinking that he had enough. He was going, no, no, no. And we talked for about an hour and a half. And really? It was, but the amazing thing is that um, it was so natural. 
And it was so funny and there great. There was a rapport right yeah. there immediately. Yeah. And of course music was the, uh, you know, the key. Of you. Your question about where did it come from? So what grabbed me so far <laughs> is when uh, it said that he, Elvis wasn't really a fan of Led's music, but he... Um, of hard rock, yeah. Yeah, of hard rock. But he gave him uh, the nod to come meet him. Mm -hmm. Number one, <clears throat> number two, he stood. They, he said we stood in a circle. And you know those conversations hours. when you yeah. do that. Those are great those conversations. Are deep conversations. Deep, you get into oh, the and security he, guard. He said back up. Told him to get. I don't even want y'all. I don't break this up. You get don't have to. Get out of here. Yeah, that's uh, the guy. He gave the uh, Cadillacs to. I bet. Yeah, yeah. Of course he was there. TCP. He was there. <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you, he had. I bet you. I bet you. After that meeting, he uh, listened to Led. Oh, he was throwing <laughs> on that that lemon song and, and days and confused. He was rocking after that. I'm and he's sure. and, and he and crazy part, he's like they're the biggest one of the biggest bands in the world, and he's starstruck. Crazy, crazy story. That was big, man. I know, and he was That's starstruck, huge. and he was starstruck. That's crazy. Something. That's something crazy. From it came from him, and he still got it. He still yeah. was into that whole Delta thing. He, you know good rocking tonight, all that stuff that got him going in the first place. But he also knew, and he had a great sense of humor, and he knew that, that he was locked in this self-parody. I mean, when the songs dried up, when Lieber and Stoller and Pomus and Schumann, uh, when that kind of whole era of, of creative writing started to wane and things changed, I didn't want to hear Elvis doing a Neil Diamond song. Right. I wanted him... I mean, it was bad enough him coming out of the army and doing Are You Lonesome Tonight, you know. I wanted him to stay wild, to give me all those edges, that kind of, that howl that he had. But, you know, he was just amazing and spectacular. And it was just that he really opened the door to, to my, my whole love of music. And because of him, and because of the choice of his material, I found that. Smiley Lewis, you know, I found all those great singers. and. Uh, and now, all these box sets that come out, some of the stuff that he did in the 60s and uh, was quite so well-crafted. Yeah. Hank Garland's guitar playing, the stuff at RCA in Nashville, I mean, the recording of it, and his humor right. in the middle of it all is, is great. So it was a dream come true to meet him, but it was also just by chance that I heard him in it. Plant liked his early stuff. He loved his early stuff. He liked the early stuff. He didn't like this redoing. He said, I don't want him to hear he him doing it. The writing started getting to a more of a creative space. And then he, the, but then remember, he was doing other people's songs. He was doing covers. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want, I like the, the earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know what? We need to, because, uh, you know, there was a big thing when the Beatles met Elvis. I wonder if they felt the same. I'm sure they did, but to see how they felt about Elvis as well. Look into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Affected me the way it did. She well, I, I, you know, and I, and I think that's the thing that the, the more time that goes by, the the easier it is for people to get confused about how important Elvis's moment was. Because you know, because there's always the feeling that well, they're not giving enough credit to Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and Little Richard and so on, which which is is true. Right. But Elvis rearranged the mainstream. If Elvis hadn't taken it from how much is that doggy in the window and, and yeah. turned it into this is mainstream popular music, then Little Richard and Chuck Berry and, and Jerry Lee Lewis would not have had the opportunity to get through it all. Sure, and he was also white, which was oh, that's right. that crucial. Was, that because the that gave him the foot in the door <laughs> that maybe Alan Freed was trying to do yeah. with, with uh, Chuck and, and uh, Bo and all that sort of stuff. But he was, and, and he was just... He was a great looking guy and he actually, that physical representation, when, by the time he got to England, guys were like hitting themselves on the head, bang, what's going on? Who's this human being? It was fantastic in the middle of all that crap. Crazy. You know, there was you one shiny uh, star. Mention to him how you incorporated your music in your career and your uh, young uh, time on stage. You yeah, well he said, well what, what are you guys, what, what's your music roots? And we, we'd all got the same roots, you know. The sort of blues out of Memphis and Mississippi and stuff. And he said, well, you know, do you do a lot of rehearsals? And of course Led Zeppelin didn't really show up until the gig, the gig was almost over before we actually arrived. <laughs> <laughs> in those days and uh, so we didn't do many sound checks but when we did I used wow. to like to sing in those big arenas <laughs> yeah. his songs because they wow. sound even bigger 
So he said, well, which song do you like? And uh, well, I said, well, I like loads of them, but I do sing this song, Love Me. You know, treat me like a fool. So we talked and talked, and then we said goodbye, oh, yeah. shook hands, and said we'd <laughs> all meet again. And I went out in the corridor and was heading for the elevator, and suddenly he swings around the door, and he says, hey, Robert. And he started singing to me, and then I started singing to him, and then we were all oh, crying. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you will love me. Break my faithful heart. Man. Fell apart. You will love me. That was a good one, man. That was a good, that was a great, that was a good time that was to be alive. Good. Man. That was a good time to be it alive. Was. Especially if you were in Led Zeppelin or Elvis. Heck yeah, <laughs> yeah just, man. No, nah, what he just said, though, um, um, Plant, bigot, we said this before too. At that time, just just struck. Yeah, but he was talking about Chuck Berry and them, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, um, they would have never blown up if 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 he didn't if he didn't put it on that plat on that bigger platform. And he and he was on third base because he was white, and every, you know the black people yeah, they did start to, from they, first they base. To, they started from home or home plate actually. Yeah, but dug out. <laughs> <laughs> it started from. They were the walking dugout. up the bat. <laughs> yeah, but um. So, he put himself out there like that, though. I, I do, I do, I do Memphis blues. I'm doing mm -hmm. music that I've heard, and, and he, but he, would, but he put Plant, it out there same too. Thing Plant was doing. So you hear Elvis do it, then why not hear BB King do it? Like he put himself out there doing that, man. That's like, yeah, man, Ain't nothing wrong that's, with that's, it. That's that's goat. That's goat material. Ain't nothing wrong with yes. that, man. Yes, that was a good one, man. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, and we up out of here.